So it's about six weeks until I need to leave for the trip cross country with the quadrant. And I'm stressing out a little bit because I have so much stuff to still get done. Um, I'm literally sitting here in a comp shop right now writing a list of the lists I need to make. So let me cover some of these real quick. Here's all the different lists I need to make and, and figure out and then check out. Maintenance of the quad yak, modifications of the quad yak, the aquatic capabilities. It still doesn't have paddles and some stuff like that. RV prep because I'm going to drive it out. Trailer prep, it's going to sit on the trailer behind the RV. Camping gear prep, food prep. Um, I posted this one video about food I bought. People are like, oh, just buy food along the way. Well, that's not exactly possible on this trip because I'll be in the wilderness quite a bit. I will be buying some along the way, but I also want to be able to take enough things to, to replace the calories I burn. Um, so, after food prep, there's route finalization, because I'm still not totally locked into one. Meanwhile, I have to keep up my training regimen, uh, my summer family plan. Uh, that's you know, how I, you know, because I spend some of the time with my family, with my daughter, and in the summertime, and I don't want to miss that time, but I don't want to interrupt the trip, and so I've got to kind of mesh those two, maybe get my family to bring her to me. We haven't locked that in yet. And then uh, growing my online presence, which is one of the things I'm doing here, because I uh, want to share this as much as possible for educational purposes and uh, get it, the word out there and show people what's possible uh, in with a whole different kind of vehicle. So sometimes it's the little things that get you. Went for a ride yesterday, it was very windy, and I lost the top half of my orange bike flag. It's a two piece uh, setup. So I thought, okay, it's just six and a half miles out and back, 13 total. I'll just go drive it today and I'll look in the ditch and look around. So I head out and there's not one, but two road crews working. Well, work crews. One is a road crew, just a ton of orange cones and orange warning flags down to one lane. So I can't even see about half of what I rode yesterday. The other one, is a gas line crew that is putting out little orange flags. I mean, literally, I mean, none of this was there yesterday. I rode this route yesterday, and so none of it was there. So today, it's like all these orange flags, hundreds of them. So needless to say, I could not spot my flag in amidst all of those, and so now I've got to go buy a new flag. And by prepping my transport, I mean prepping my 1973 Shasta RV. So I know people do things various ways. Most of you guys, uh, they're doing cross country trips with a bike or even a trike, a recumbent, and put it in a box and then ship it. My rig is 12 feet long, four feet wide, four feet tall, weighs 150 pounds. So my transportation methodologies are limited. Um, I also know I'm going to be in wilderness a lot, so I'm going to carry a lot of my own food. Uh, went through that online with some people I showed a shopping trip I did, and people were like, don't carry all that, just buy food along the way, which also works for most bike riders, but I'm going to be getting in the water and staying in the water for days, weeks on, at a time. Uh, there's limited resupply possibilities. So I'm going to take a desk with a trailer quad yak will be on the trailer. I'm going to drive it out to the coast and then I'm going to leapfrog with this RV. So I'll drive it ahead two, three hundred miles, maybe take a bus back, get uh, you know the warm showers, folks, some of those people, shuttle, uh, find some way back to the quad yak, ride it up to where this is or jump past it. Anyway, get the point. I'm going to, I'm going to leapfrog across the United States. That'll allow me to carry spare tires, extra tools, things I don't want to carry, but that I might want. Um, essentially, you know, I'm working with an experimental vehicle. So more things are probably going to break. Uh, really, my chance of failure is probably higher than somebody that starts with just a regular bike that weighs in at 40 kilograms, fully loaded, uh, that kind of thing. So that's what I'm working on today. So I'm prepping the RV. I'm going to be uh, airing a tire up that went kind of low over the winter and you know oil brake fluid all that kind of stuff get it in the shop there's a few things i know that need to be worked on 
So I got to get that done uh, before I leave. Then I've got to work on the trailer, then marry the two of them together, uh, figure out good connections on the trailer. I've got some ideas. I'll be showing you the trailer in some other video. All right, so that's what I'm working on today is prepping the RV. There are certain joys and pains of owning a vintage RV. Uh, one of the most truly joyful things in the world is having one of these sit all winter, getting in it, doing a few quick things, you know, checking some fluids, and turn the key and they start right up and they almost always do in this case um, <clears throat> I haven't tried this yet so I don't know I'm about to do that live on camera uh, after pumping the gas about 20 times because my gas tank is downhill behind me about 15 feet away so I have to pump this thing like a ridiculous amount of time one of the pains is uh, kind of forgetting how things work I check the uh, brake fluid reservoirs and one of them is low so grab some stuff out but for some reason I was thinking it was steering I was checking the steering so I grabbed the steering fluid and dumped it in and then I realized that I'd done that wrong so then I had to go get a siphon and siphon that out and uh, that's what that is a uh, mixture of brake and uh, and steering fluid and I hope I didn't mess anything up but I think I, I totally siphoned the the reservoir out and I hadn't started it so there was no circulation so I think it'll be okay. Fill it up with brake fluid, a uh, little bit of oil, a little bit of brake fluid, air the tire up. I'm not actually going to go anywhere right now. Uh, I'm going to let it sit till tomorrow and I want to make sure that tire stays up overnight. If it does that then I feel safe enough driving around town at least far enough to go get it checked. Took it in once, they said it was fixed, it's not. Alright, now I'm leaving this door open for a reason uh, when you first start up if mice got to your gas line and chewed a hole and the engine compartment lights on fire which is right here i want a way out quickly so the door's gonna stay open i'm gonna pump this thing about 20 times and we'll see if she fires up Thinking about it, tell the battery is kind of going a little bit soft at the end there. Let's see if. Uh... Nope. I had that one shot at it. Didn't get enough gas into it, I don't think. I mean, this has literally sat since last fall, anyway. So, six months. I'll uh, probably pull around right now and just go ahead and jump it and try it again here in a minute. Uh, the other kind of cool thing about these is I can see the uh, gas filter, a, a glass one you clean out, and uh, it's still bone dry, so I still have not cranked on the gas enough, pumped on the gas enough for this. So, get about another 20, and this happens, you know, once you start driving it, it won't do this. It's gotta sit for like a week or a month for it to all pull itself out of the line. I'm going to go check the gas filter and see if I'm getting anything up there at all. Could be dry. Um, if I pulled in with very little gas last year, when I stopped it and let it sit, it could all evaporate away. This is so the next step, if I can't get any gas into it, is to go get a five gallon gas can full of gas. She's been uh, charging now for about 15, 20 minutes off that other battery. Uh, it's got five gallons of gas in it. Start this again, pump the gas about 20 times, turn the key. You may wonder why I'm just not using the fuel gauge, why I didn't know that it was empty, because most of these older RVs, fuel gauges don't work. Or if they work, they work kind of faulty. But they're just not that accurate. Alright, we'll try this one more time. Okay, well there is gas in the filter, which means it's getting there. Uh, it's only about half full, it sits on its side, which means I probably haven't flooded it. Usually if it's completely full, then I flooded it. So it may be either right on the verge of starting, or the trouble with the ignition. I put a new electronic ignition in this, and because it was a new system, trying to marry to an old system, like I know at least one of the wires is not 
standard. It's if I can't get it in the next couple of tries, I'm gonna have somebody come out and check to make sure I have power going to the ignition. I'll pull some spark plugs and test that. All right, not starting. Um, before that new electric ignition, I could never flood this thing. Now, I think maybe I can. So hopefully I haven't done that. Uh, I'm gonna go out and see if I can figure that out. Maybe give it another 10, 15 minutes and try it again. <laughs> 